complement of players here tonight. If you guys want to say hey or hi or anything at all, now is your opportunity to say whatever comes to mind. Excelsior! Anything at all. Kumquat. Hello? Kumquat. That's, that is, you'll learn what kumquat means later, Help Cal. Me. Yeah, no, yeah, you will. You will find out what that means. <laughs> uh, I do not okay. consent. You, you, you will learn to consent. Uh, uh, and <laughs> speak, speaking of kumquats, uh, okay. we're going to start the session off the same way we start every single session with a little bit of a recap and then picking up into this uh, not great situation uh, the players have gotten themselves into. So... Without further ado, last time, having your rest interrupted by a trio of Gricks, with you all still pretty spent from the trek in the caves before, uh, it was a little troubling, but you persevered, actually quickly went to bed uh, without much fuss. You woke up in the decrepit building, still no sign of Cal, hoping for the best. Uh, you left a mark in the building in case he were, he came by to tell him where to follow. And seeing another building in this place, you're still curious about this echoing noise, this wave, and decided to ignore the building that you didn't inspect and you know, assumed it had the same fate as the previous one, noting the door had one of the hinges sh melted shut on it. You did see a passageway north as well as a passageway west opting to head west, uh, you came to a smaller cavern, still larger than most, uh, contained a water wheel, which used the power of bellows, which in turn probably maintained a large smelter. All of it in disuse, bodies scattered across the floor here, dust covered and very dead from long ago. The channel now running dry, uh, but as Zadkiel was about to test for undead in the area, a floating skull made its presence known as it burned brightly with green fire and bright red glowing eyes. Several corpses animated and attacked. The skull seemed to unleash a massive fireball on your troop, knocking out White Claw and damaging several others quite harshly. However, Zadkiel, uninjured, stretched his uh, celestial wings out in this moment and flew towards it, launching his own assault, aided by a moonbeam from Alva, and ended up killing this skull. And dealing with the zombies was a little bit of an easy task after the skull was felled. Now here, you had several directions to head. There were passages almost nearly every direction, even following the channel if you wanted to. But spying a door on the far western side, you wanted to rest up a bit, but didn't want to leave any doors unchecked. So uh, you started messing about with the door, trying to get it open. We're unsuccessful with both Mel and White Claw doing so from afar. <clears throat> Zadkiel wholeheartedly rushed in and charging past the door in a makeshift barricade that was on the other side, found himself in a room full of bugbears ready to defend themselves from hearing noise previously. With the bugbears spilling into the hallway after Zadkiel, the rest of you readied your own defenses. Unknown screech called out from the southern area as a pack of ghouls came rushing up towards you all. Still amidst the uh, combat, we're going to pick up at the top of initiative. Cal, go ahead and roll some initiative for me, please. Gotcha. I, we did already roll Moonbeam last we left off. So I didn't, didn't want to forget about that. Fair enough. Cal, I will need you to give me a stealth check to start as well. Yes. Fair enough. So with all that, uh, starting at the top of the round with all these bugbears, getting right back into it with this. This battle, go back to Darkling. Uh, we're getting a little bit of uh, feedback or like little popping crackles from a couple of you guys. So just keep an eye out on that, if you will. But top of the round, bugbears. 
this one here is frightened and seemingly seeing... You guys aren't sure what he's seeing. White Claw knows exactly what he's seeing. He's seeing a double of, of Isabel after she kind of menacingly attacked him. He is going to try to still hit Isabel, but at disadvantage because definitely has her attention. Uh, getting a 21 to hit, Isabel. And that, was, that, that was the disadvantage. That would hit, yeah. As you take seven points of piercing damage. As he's just kind of swatting out, like, very uncarefully. Uh, nearly hitting Alva, the ghoul, and even his friend behind him. As he deals some damage to Isabel. The other bugbear, seeing this light come down is going to take a swat towards uh, Alva uh, with his morning star. Getting a 15 to hit Alva. And you are muted, Alva. That hits. All right. As Alva, this is a pretty hearty swing. You take 17 points of piercing damage. As just kind of reaching from across that, he was slamming his morning star down onto your shoulder. I do need a constitution saving throw to maintain uh, concentration on your moonbeam. The DC is 17. Oh wait, no, it's half, it's half, it's half the damage, I'm sorry. So it would be DC 10 still, right? Concentration. It's a constitution Const save, yeah. Constitution. Okay. Mm -hmm. Boy, I can't remember concentration right now. Either way, Ooh. we'll figure it out later. Uh, it is half the, half the damage you take, or 10. Whichever is lower. Or whichever is higher, sorry. So, maintaining concentration on this moonbeam spell. Uh, the other one back here will wail out at Zadkiel. Getting a 13 to hit. And That's a miss. Kind of block it with your shield easily enough. The last bugbear, let me make sure you can see, uh, will also throw a javelin at Zadkiel. Getting a natural 20. That is. As you take seven points of piercing damage. Okay. These bugbears kind of grunting and just like unsurprised by the ghouls that were coming up this, this hallway. Uh, this guy's still no longer frightened, but still kind of under the impression that there's something else there. Uh, that'll take us to Alva. Alva, what are you doing? Um, I'd like to use my action to move my moonbeam. All right. I'm going to move it right into the center of these four ghouls underneath me. All right. As the moonbeam scatters across nearly, you feel this tinge of pain as it crosses across you, but it doesn't affect you guys because it is just for an instant. As you move your moonbeam onto these ghouls in front of you. Okay, and then am I able to move past the ghoul next to me? Say no, you are locked in there with Zadkiel at the moment. Okay. Um, then I'm going to stay where I'm at, and that'll be my turn. All right. And we'll take us to Mel. Mm hmm a male walks in the wrong one. A male walks around the corner to see what's going on. See a bunch of ghouls start piling in from the south, and bugbear is still doing pretty well on their own. Mm hmm. So Mel's going to throw a fireball at the first ghoul. All right, the fire bolt. Fire bolt. All right, let's see it. 
a natural one, kind of startled by the sheer number of, like, you weren't expecting to see a bunch of ghouls, uh, but startled in this moment, it just kind of fizzles out and just, like, lands a foot away from you. Anything else for Mel? Yeah. <laughs> Mel goes back. I was. <laughs> I was trying to figure out if she would run in a different direction. That's all. No, I got you. Uh, fair enough. Just going back into cover, taking us to Isabel. Mm -hmm. Not looking pretty hot yourself. Ghouls to your south, bugbears to your west. What are you doing? Oh no, I... Okay, yeah, okay. Whoa, my mic wasn't working. Uh, yeah, I'm not in a good area. I'm not in a good place. Yeah. Um... In a tight spot? Let's see. Let's see. Um... Okay. Um... How to left to me might not have much left. Uh, yeah, he's Let's... one that you scared, and he looks like he's seeing something else. He's uh, actually, I think he's still scared until the end of your turn, so he is still frightened. Okay, cool. Um... If I attack him, will that be at advantage because he's distracted? Uh, I think just his attacks are at advantage. Let me double check, Brighton. It's good to brush up on these things every now and then. Uh, frightened condition has it has disadvantage and it can't willingly yeah. move closer towards you. So you you do not have advantage against it, but it is it's cowering a little bit, defending itself. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna attack him with my dragon slayer. All right. Swing, uh, swinging at that bugbear. Oh, shoot. I did have... Sorry. Advantage was plopped on. Is that You're, okay? I think fine. it was from the last any, time. Any, any time. I will say this every time. Any time you have advantage or disadvantage clicked and you do not actually have advantage or disadvantage, I will simply take the first roll, regardless of if it's the higher or lower. It's just going to be... Because that's what you would have rolled first, so... Okay. The 17 does hit. Okay. Yeah, you're good. For ooh, ooh. 14 points of slash damage, you cleave into his stomach. His entrails spill out. He's trying to pull them back in, but then you see he just kind of slumps over as if he was hit by something else, oddly enough. Yummy. Um, and I'm going to continue floor. my... Wonderful. Um... <laughs> I'm going to keep my attack going. All right. Um, and I am going to get, going to go for the guy below me, but let me just, there's something I want to use that I haven't used in quite a while. Uh, Your power attack? Wait. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, but I don't see it on my, yes, here we go. Okay, yeah. So, just because we're in a sticky situation, sure. I know it's just a ghoul, but whatevs. I'm going to use the Great Weapon Master okay. on the Kinda guy like below adding me. Adding a little extra weight onto it as you spin upwards towards this uh, ghoul. Give me an attack awesome. with your Great Weapon Master. All right. Uh, Minus five uh, to hit. Plus ten to damage, though. Okay. All right. Um, oh, wait. Would that be under the global attack modifier? Or yes, there? global attack modifier okay. and the global damage modifier. Go ahead and check them both. Okay. Off. Alrighty. And I will... Then I'll just click on the Dragon Slayer. That is correct. Uh, sword. Okay. Getting a natural one as you go in for this big swing. The <laughs> ghoul just kind of takes a sidestep as you swing down. Your sword kind of gets stuck there for a moment. Uh, oh, no. Yep. That's what happens. Whatever. Anything I else wanted for to Isabel? try it. Yeah. Um. Well, no, hey, the nat I one wasn't, yeah. wasn't because of the great weapon mastery. It was just you would have rolled a nat one anyways. That's good to know. <laughs> All right. So stay, <laughs> My luck is staying, not sour. <laughs> staying put there, Isabel. 
Uh, yep, I am. All right, that will take us to the ghouls. And trying to remember the damage that you rolled for this round for your... You guys are going to see me scroll up and look for the damage from the moonbeam. It was 11 damage. And these ghouls are going to roll some constitution saves in the moonbeam. Getting a 9, a 1, a 3, and an 18. As, boy, what did I just say? 11 points of damage. As the front couple will take 11. And the back right one seems to kind of shrug off most of it, kind of uh, stepping out of the moonlight just briefly, only taking 5. Uh, but that starts their turn. As these first two ghouls will launch an assault at uh, Alva. One of them's going to go in for a bite, the other's going in for a claw. Uh, the bite got an 18 to hit. That hits. As you take 12 points of piercing damage. And I need another constitution saving throw. All right, still maintaining that concentration. The claw that one of them kind of lashed out with got a seven to hit. The That's a miss. others will kind of barrel through uh, to get better vantage point. Uh, Alva, you do have, you can make an attack of opportunity as, as two of them kind of pass by you. Okay, I'd like to attack oh, with yeah. my thorn whip. It can't be a cantrip unless you have a feat for that. You can attack with your quarterstaff, though. Okay, I'll do a quarterstaff then. All right, uh, you try and whack out it as it kind of barrels through the other ghouls. Uh, in fact, one of them will actually run away from Isabel and go towards White Claw. Uh, so two of them are going to attack Isabel. One with its bite and the other with its claws. No. Uh, bite got a six to hit. Miss. The top one up here going with the claws. Got a ten to hit. Oh my gosh, miss! And this guy, this other, like, bald, undead, elven form rushing towards White Claw. Uh, is going to try and reach out with his claw. Getting a 21 to hit White Claw. <laughs> As White Claw, you take six points of slashing damage. And I do need a constitution save and throw. That's six. Yes, yeah, six. Okay. Constitution save is DC 10. I'll let you know that now. All right, with the 12, you feel your body tense up for a moment as it scratches across your chest and just kind of like sends this kind of cold, uh, interesting feeling. Never felt anything like it before. But now you know what a scratch from a ghoul feels like. As I believe that will end the ghoul's turn. Taking us to Cal. <laughs> All right. Uh, Cal being extremely surprised at the situation uh, is going to take... I'm, I'm in stealth, correct? Uh, you believe so. All right, but that would require... All right. So you're going to let me know whether or not I have advantage? Yeah. If you, I mean, are you... Are you yeah. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. So you're I'm, I'm you're gonna, pretty well hidden. I'm going to take a shot at that one. Uh, the one up top next to... Uh... Correct. Okay. It will have pretty good cover on you because it is up 10, 15 feet of stairs. So you just kind oh, of, you, you kind of barely have sight up there. What about this guy? That guy would be a little easier because he's right at the top of the steps, yeah. All right. I'll take a shot at him. All right. Advantage. Sneak attack. Sorry. A 23 will hit. For 
12 points of psychic damage. As this, you all would see this orange blade come out of the darkness and strike this kind of right in the back neck, the bottom of the, the base of the skull of this ghoul as it's lashing out at Isabel. A familiar sight of Callan's attack. Anything else for Cal? Yes, uh, for my interaction, I'm going to shout at the top of his lungs. Uh, All right, you filthy shite eaters, come and get me! I'm going to try to taunt some of them off and down the down the hallway. Uh, one, Give two, me, three, I'm four, I'm going to say a five. intimidation check. At, I'm going to say a disadvantage. Ooh. Pretty good. We'll see what happens next. Well, would a 1d6 help? Or did I pass? Oh, that, that, yeah, yeah, you passed. That twenty is I get my, uh, some, okay. something will happen from that, guaranteed. Gotcha. You just don't. All know right, what. so I move. I move down here for my bonus action. I'd like to go stealth. I will say that will take your bonus action. To, to show. Oh, for the to, intimidation. To actually get their attention like that. Okay. Just for, you got you got good movement. You're good. Okay. You feel you're a safe distance away. All right. Uh, but that will take us to White Claw, this ghoul right in front of your face. I will use my action to disengage and All move right. back. And then I'm going to use two sorcerer points to get a and spell to cast uh, Chill Touch as a bonus action. All right. As a very quick Cat Claw reaches out towards the ghoul that was attacking you. Yep. All right. Let's see it. An 11 just misses as it scrapes against this ghoul, but it's a part that had already been, like, scabbed open, and you just hit bone. That doesn't do anything to it. That'll be it for for Wyclaw. All right. Bomb of the round. Zadkiel, what are you doing? Zadkiel is going to reach over and touch um, <clears throat> Alva and use Lay on Hands. Alright. I'm going to give her 15 points of healing. Alright. Action and Laying on Hands. Alva, you, have, is- you get 15 points of healing. Damn. Thank you. Just from a little touch. Oh. Sorry, I just need to reach some on it, but I think I have to attack to use that. If you take the attack action, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, as for my bonus action, uh, I'm just gonna stand my ground. Alright. Standing your ground, that will take us to the bugbears as these guys do start filling in. And he's like, all right, get over here. Uh, <laughs> knowing that that guy is normally pretty useless with uh, javelins as they do fill in. Uh, two of them will make strikes out against the Zadkiel with their morning stars. Uh, getting a 21 and a 6 to hit. The 21 hits. As you take 11 points of piercing damage. Uh, Alright, Zad is unconscious. Uh, Zad kill falls unconscious. Uh, the other bugbear, on the other hand, as I try to look at his vision for a second, uh, is going to... Uh, this caster person, or the person that just killed another bugbear. He's going to roll for it. High Isabel, low Alva. Hi, Isabel. He's going to swing his morning star against Isabel, kind of stepping over the, the dead, unconscious body of his ally, getting a 20 to hit. Uh, that hits. As Isabel, you take 13 points of piercing damage. Bye bye. <laughs> As Isabel also falls unconscious. Like, yeah, we got him on the run, fellas. 
Looks like they took care of the skull, too. Good day for us. Uh, they're just pounding into you guys. Uh, they'll take us to Alva. Alva, you just see Zadkiel and Isabel fall down. Get, get knocked unconscious by these two bugbears. What are you doing? You got ghouls right on the other side of you. Mm-hmm. Okay, um... Hold on, I need to look. At my spell slots. Perfect. I think you have one, I can't remember if it's first or second. I think you have one first. First, yeah. All right, um, I'm gonna use my bonus action. Can I use my bonus action for healing word on someone who's unconscious? Absolutely. Okay. I'm gonna use it on Zadkiel. All right. Has whisper kumquat onto him. Or probably yell it, I don't know. Are you yelling it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. There you go. <laughs> As Cal, you would hear kumquat be yelled out from afar. Yeah. As Zadkiel gets seven points of healing on the ground. Okay, and I, for my action, I still have a flying potion. You do. Um, that I would like to use. All right. I don't know if I have to push a button for that. There um, is no button for flying. It's just you are flying now as you drink this potion of flying. Ceiling's in here about 10 feet until you get to the main area in here, which is I 30 feet. Can I decide where where I go, like, or do I just have to be Absolutely. in the air? The thing is, when you move away from people, the attack of opportunity stuff still applies. But I'll still be in the air, right? Well, they, as you move away from them in the air, they will still get attack of opportunity against you. So as soon as, gonna... as soon as you leave their reach is when they get their attack of opportunity, whether it's flying, oh, swimming, or, or like, running. Okay. All right. Um, hmm. So. I still kind of want to get out of here. You know what? I'm not going to use my flying potion just yet, then. Did I already drink it? I don't know. No, you're good. Are. You're good. We're, we're just in conversation right now talking about what your characters do. Nothing right. has happened other than the healing word on ZadQ. Okay, I want to shift um, into a so that, giant spider. That would take up your bonus action, so then Zadkiel wouldn't get the healing word. Wait, I thought shifting was an action. Wild shaping yeah. is, is a bonus action for you. Oh, okay. All you right. You could cure um, wounds on Zadkiel as an action in wild shape. I don't think I bonus. have any more self slots left, and yeah, I don't I'm have saying cure instead wounds. of healing word. I'm just, you know. I don't know if you have cure wounds prepared or not. Oh, either. Yeah. So, um, all right. Then you know what? I am gonna drink my flying potion. Okay. And and move away. You will be getting five attacks of opportunity against you. What five? All of them get an attack of opportunity. Everyone you move away from. So, how come earlier when the ghouls moved, they were moving away from all of us, but we didn't all get an attack of opportunity, only one of us did? You did. Uh, I and did. Is I did Isabel, did. Isabel did as well. They didn't move out of area of Zadkiel or anyone else. Like, they have to be next to someone in order to be in that area? They have to be within reach of whatever their attack is, yeah. Once, once so you kind of like leave a... without taking the disengage yeah. action, then attacks of opportunity happen. Pretty much if you're not dodging or rolling away from them, they will get a chance to hit you. Hmm. Okay. You said I can't move past any of these ghouls, right? I would say you could if you fly. 
But it, w it would definitely impose the opportunity attacks. Yeah. Okay. It's a sticky situation, I'm not going to lie to you. Alright. Um, let's see. I don't have anything else that I can do then. I can't wild shape, so I think that's just going to be it for me. You you still have your action, so you can cantrip or attack with your quarterstaff if you want. Yeah. Um, let's see. I know I have Thorn Whip. I don't think poison will do anything to the, the ghouls. They probably are immune to that. Um, you did learn that previously. You did try the poison spray on them on the last time you encountered ghouls. Oh, was it the ghoul that I did it on? Yeah. And, like nothing. Yeah. And exactly. they're like, well, all right, I'm gonna try and thorn whip then. All right. The the ghoul that's directly next to me. Okay, underneath Isabel. Yeah. All right. Uh, An eleven just misses. Seems to be a dexterous guy. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay. you're kind of stuck there uh, for this moment in time. Uh, but that'll take us to Mel. Mm -hmm. Mel, what are you doing? There we go. Mel steps on over here. And steps to here. And down this row, she's going to attempt her scroll of lightning bolt down this one lane. Okay. So okay. I think you need me to roll. Roll a, it'll be a charisma check, not a save, just a check. Uh, the DC mm -hmm. is 13. As you pull out this scroll, quickly start uttering the incantations. Uh, so not a save, so it'll be just minus, minus two from that. So a 16 is still good as a giant lightning bolt arcs out of the paper and shoots down the hallway. Go ahead and roll me six or eight D six damage. This really only matters if, if one of them makes a save. So we'll do that one. He got a nat 20. Uh, he got double nat 20, actually. Uh, so one of them only takes 13 points of damage as he kind of ducks below as the others are struck by this bolt, this giant thunderous bolt of lightning arcing down the hallway. Isabel you do fail a death save automatically as this light you just this lightning bolt just arcs across her as well i was wondering if that was gonna happen <laughs> but the ghoul the bugbear another bugbear and even the other bugbear is one of them is just barely up i'm just gonna move them out of the way for now as the hallway definitely very much cleared up and I'm going to use a bonus action to upscale Healing Word so to bring you, back Isabel. You can't, can't, can't upscale. Cast, you can't cast another spell because you essentially cast a, well, no, a, it was a, a third scroll. Level. Right. Use the scroll to cast the spell. You can't. You can't cast two spells, unfortunately. Okay. I understand that it counts as a spell. Right. Instead of like use a potion or something. Well, potions aren't necessarily. Potions break, I understand break, that break the I rules see of the casting line. for sure. Yeah. And that was 15. So Mel will continue to walk over to here. All right. That will take us to Isabel. You always for me a death save. Okay, I'll do that. All right. 
That will take us to the ghouls. Um, this guy. Actually, uh, Alba, roll me some moonbeam damage, please. As two of them need to make a couple of con saves. Got a ten and a one. So it's the same as just pushing Moonbeam. Yeah, just hit right? hit Moonbeam, make sure you say level two or whatever. Alright, as they will both each take five points of moon damage. This radiant light arcs down. Uh they will both run down the hall. Alva and Zadkiel can make a tax opportunity against this guy if you want. Zadkiel, yours, oh, yeah. yours is at disadvantage because you are on the ground. It's all right. And Alva, you can make a quarter staff attack if you want as well. Mm. Oh, nice. 18 will hit that guy. And as he will take six points of slashing, as that is just enough as you lop off uh, his leg and his body just goes tumbling and crashing down the steps. Nice. More. The other one, Alva, you do miss as he runs down the hall chasing after. Uh, gets right. Yes. Actually, he can get right there. Right up to you, Cal. As that is his movement, though. That's, that's all he can do is just get up to you. I got uh, his attention. You got his attention. Uh, this guy here. They're going to be distracted by that lightning bolt. Uh, are going to chase after Mel. As both these ghouls run and lunge on Mel. Do I get a push of the deck as he moves towards me? No. He doesn't move out of your threatened area. Okay. One of them is going to use a bite attack. The other is going to use a claw attack against Melancholia. Uh, Claw got a 13. Bite got an 18. I think the bite hits. All right. One kind of bites down into like, kind of tumbling as it does, bites down into like your foot as you take nine points of piercing damage. Got an artery. <laughs> That'll take us to Cal. <laughs> So I can I, I, rem refresh my memory. Can I still fire at them at normal, even though that yeah, they're right so there? Yeah, so essentially your weapon, it's like a dagger. You can stab someone with it, or you can throw it. All right. Uh, I'm going to try to fire one right in his face. I'm going to use bonus action to steady aim. Think about and like, then, uh, uh, like Psylocke, if anyone's familiar with Psylocke from the 90s X-Men. Yeah. She's a badass, okay? Uh, cool. it. With psychic All right. All right, let's see it. Did you say you were steady aiming? Is that what you said? Correct. All right, 17 will hit. And we'll give you the sneak attack for 17, 15, I can do math, 15 points of psychic damage as this orange energy just bursts through his head as his bits go everywhere, as he is very dead. Woo! All right. Uh, oh, I can't move. I'm done. Right, because you steady aimed. Yep. That'll take us to White Claw. I'm going to use this staff two-handed to hit the one right there beside me. All right. Uh, 15 will hit. Uh, for eight points of bludgeoning damage. As you whack the backside of this ghoul, kind of goes into its skin a little bit, bleeds out of it pretty, like this dark, almost black blood. It's still up though. And I'm gonna convert, uh, first I will spell set as a bonus action, the sorcerer point. All right. Uh, 
That'll take us to Zad Q. All right. Uh... On, the, on the ground at the moment, got one standing bugbear barely in front of you. Bodies all along the hall, including Isabel. I guess I gotta stand and go for the bug there. All right. Stand up, pull your sword out. Let's see that attack. A 22 will hit. As he's kind of still winded, kind of in shock of that sheer power of the lightning bolt that got sent through the hallway for eight points of slashing you just kind of cut into his like the tip of his neck severing his spinal cord as he just kind of slumps down right there in the hallway you kind of hear him mumble that wasn't good before you hit him <laughs> anything else for zad uh, Zad's is going to move up over here towards Isabel, getting prepared to heal her as soon as he can. All right. I'll take us to Alva. Alva, area cleared of bugbears. Well, living bugbears and ghouls. Uh, Isabel down next to your moonbeam behind you. Here, you see a spark of orange energy flash to the south for a moment. What are you doing? Hmm. All right. Um. Um. I. Are there any more ghouls left? Because I can't see uh, any. They. You saw a pair of them run eastward, um. kind of <laughs> chasing after the high magic. Okay. Sorry, Isabel. I I do something for you, but I'm out of spells. So if you, I will I say, if you wanted, you you can stabilize someone without magic. Oh. <laughs> well, the same way a person in real life does by stopping the bleeding or you know trying to patch up wounds, essentially stabilize them for yeah. a second. If you, if you, it, it would be a medicine check DC ten, and it uses your action. Anyone can okay. try that at any time. All right, I'll I'll do that. Okay. And try to help out. Give me a medicine a check. Medicine check. Let me yeah. find medicine. Give me just a second. There it is. With a six, uh, unsure how to heal electric damage. It is. There's something something there that you just can't quite put your finger on she has these you can kind of patch up the the spike wounds from the the morning stars but the lightning damage and like the the festering i think there was some some ghoul attacks there it seemed to be festering a little bit mm -hmm. but unfortunately you can't can't quite figure out how to patch her up right um. I'm gonna move a little bit. All right. One, ten, fifteen. I'm gonna move over here just so I can see. You can see him. All right. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna try and uh, thorn whip. So the medicine check would have been your action. Oh, okay. And thorn whip is an it's, action. It's an medical. action. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Then for that's that's it for now. Then. Okay. I'll take us to Mel. Yeah, Mel's a little afraid, so she's going to use healing cure wounds on herself at level two. Okay.
with your last bit of magic, you heal yourself for 10 hit points. Now I have one more spell left. All right. Anything else for, for Mel? Yeah, you get 10. Seven oh, yeah. plus three. Um, da, 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 no. All right. Isabel. I need, a, I need you to whisper me a death save. Drum roll, please. No. No. All right. That'll take us to the ghouls. <laughs> Uh, one of them will maintain its attack against Mel, uh, going in for a, say, a claw attack, trying to grab at your neck. Uh, getting a 13 to hit as you kind of, like, go backwards and it just kind of scratches the shoulder of your armor there. Uh, this other ghoul will turn around after getting hit in the back by White Claw will go in for a bite attack. Getting a five to hit. Misses. Has kind of like slowly, it just seems to be out of sorts, especially like maybe you hit something in its back that kind of took its uh, spine out of alignment or something, kind of hissing towards you. Uh, you just keep it at bay with your quarter staff, taking us to Cal. Uh, can I use my bonus action to go stealth? You can and try, then approach. And try and creep up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So do I uh, stealth? Yeah. Give Give me a stealth check. Yeah, sure. So I would say think of it less of going stealth, just being sneaky. Like it's not like magical invisibility, but whatever you're approaching. You are doing okay. so quietly. I, I know what you mean, though. All right. And then a one, two, three, four. Shit. Five. I'm going to use my action to continue moving. Right. Uh, this blue thing here, is that? That is, is a, that the that is a ray, of, ray of moonlight shining down on the stairs. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, done. All right. Going at the edge of this moonbeam. Uh, that'll take us to White Claw. I'm going to hit him again. The same that tried to hit me. All right. With the... Uh, Try and the staff. Bop him. Boop his snoot. 20's going to hit. <laughs> For four points of bludgeoning damage. As, yeah, you boop his snoot. And he kind of like gets like knocked backwards a second. A little bit, good bit of blood pours out of his nose. Still hissing towards you. Still. And put a spell section. One spell. First level uh -huh. as a All right. sorcerer point. Fair enough. I'll take us to Zad Kiel. Okay. Uh, Zad is going to lean down over um, Isabella and put one hand on like the side of her head and the other hand over her heart and to catch Kasha cat cast. Sorry. Yes, that too. <laughs> uh, healing hands. All right. As you you take your own divine energy and fill Isabel with it. Isabel, you breathe in heavily as this warm breeze kind of fills your lungs. <laughs> and you get eight hit points. Or, yeah, eight hit points. Eight hit points, I don't know if I hit that twice. Boy, was yeah. she on the brink. <laughs> I figured. And after that, Zad would 
continue movement. Uh, mm-hmm. Basically, come over here protecting all the seeing what's going on. The guy with the least amount of hit points is protecting the person with the most amount of hit points. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Makes total sense. Yep. Total Zad move. Mm-hmm. Zad's a Chad. What do you want? Yeah. Well, he's got he's got the armor for it at least. Zad, can yeah, you, got... you run up, seeing these two ghouls kind of assaulting both Mel and White Claw? Anything else for your turn? Mm, that's gonna be it. All right. Taking us to Alva. Thanks for stepping right in front of me, babe. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, all right, I'm gonna um, thorn whip. Um, this one of these ghouls. Mm. If I thorn yeah. whip the, the one, yeah, yeah, that one. Well, I was just gonna say that one's attacking Mel, uh, and this one's attacking White Claw. If that matters. Uh, well, I what I was thinking is if I have to kind of thorn whip around that hill to reach the one that's attacking White Claw, yeah, you will can that be at, will that be at disadvantage? No, I would, I would say the space here is so open, you can kind of just take like a side step out. It's not like a closed hallway or a doorway or something like that. It's it's open enough to where you can there's movement. Zadokiel can duck and like move to the side for a second. You're good here. All right, so I'm going to attack the one that's going after White Claw. All right. See that whip? Fifteen's going to hit. For three points of piercing damage, do you want to drag it any closer? Um, no. All right, as it just kind of pops on his shoulder and blood starts spilling out of his shoulder wound. Still up. Anything else for Alva? I'm gonna move over next to Zed Kiel. Um, And then that'll, that'll be it for me. All right, taking us to Mel. Mm-hmm. Got some of the heat taken off you from one of these ghouls, but one of them is still trying to get to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that Alvi just attacked with the thorn rip, I will as well with one handed you. All right, give me that heat swing. 17 will hit this ghoul. The big Q damage? For four points of slashing damage, you kind of right into like it's center kind of like well side uh rib cage as it spits out blood at you and kind of tries to growl but it just like blood just keeps coming out as it kind of reaches out towards white claw one more time and just kind of falls at his feet as that guy's gone anything else yeah that's it for now all right Isabel, you're awake. What you up to? Hello. Um, Everyone so seemed to like, I... like just kind of healed you for a second and ran to the side there. So I'm, you know, typical me, dazed and confused. Um, and bodies I believe everywhere. bodies are everywhere. It's it's a it's a mess. Um, so I'm gonna. I guess I take half my action to stand up. A half your movement, but yeah. Half my movement. Sorry. You're good. And then, yeah, I can only really move three squares. So, um, so. see, you see the moonlight and cow at the bottom of the steps, just barely as you stand up. Um, and as I'm running by, I'll be like, wait, excuse me, say that again, Callan? No. Um, I'm gonna run by me like, where the hell have you been? And then I'll just, yeah, 5, 10, 15. 
And then, I believe, I've been keeping up to date on my, my nice little sheet here, and I have superiority dice to... to do a commander's strike. And let's see. Mel's the only one in, in range. Mel's the only one in range? Yeah, everyone. no one else has a weapon. I'll give it and to Mel then. Like, that is close enough. Yeah, I'll All give right. it to Mel. As Mel, uh, Isabel shouts out, like, get it. No, you can use you, your... You go! Yeah. You can use your reaction to give me an attack with you. On this... Yeah. On this ghoul. Kind of as you see her pull out her axe from one, takes a swing for the other. 19 will hit. Get it? For three points of slash damage, you kind of cut across its gut a little bit. Nothing spills out but blood, though. The creature's still alive. Second highest melee total I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else for Isabel? Nah. Your good. action and movement. All right, taking us to the ghoul. Uh, gonna just try to. Still trying to reach and like get under the plates of your armor. Gonna go for a claw attack against you. Getting a twenty-three to hit. Oh, that's a solid hit. As you take seven points of slashing damage, and I need a constitution saving throw. As it finally kind of gets under your armor to the right, like, say, like, under your gauntlet, kind of. You feel that cold sting of numbness as it scratches you. But that's that's all the effect you feel is just a little bit of numbness, a little tingling, fades pretty quickly. Uh, is seven how much? Seven points of seven. slashing, yes. Yeah. Uh, and that will take us to Cal, the bottom of the stairs. So, does passing through the moonbeam affect me, or do if I end my turn in it? Uh, there's one way to find out. Nope. I will oh, hold thing? action. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. I'll hold my action and shoot anything that I don't like. All right. Kind of just readying there to shoot up or down or all around. Oh. With this, like, moonbeam. can see it sizzling. On... Well, actually, there's no bodies there. Uh, but you would see it kind of... Any remnant of blood is just kind of boiling on the steps. Uh, I'll take us to White Claw. I'm going to use Shell Touch on the last ghoul. All right. It's going to be a miss as it kind of swats away your illusory claw. I'm going to try again. I'm going to use two sorcerer points to try again. All right. Quick and that Shell Touch. That will hit. Four points in the chronic damage as it kind of swats away another one immediately just kind of grabs it and claws against its chest there it'll take four points of damage still up though and that'll be it all right Zadkiel, you're up one second all right Zad is gonna run up and just Slash it, ghoul boy. All right, Slashy McSlasherson. Slashing away, doing what Slashy does best. 14 will hit. Out. Out and Slash. Come on. Is that, the, is that the noise it makes? <laughs> uh, <laughs> as, you, as you carve into the school, still trying to claw through Mel's armor, you just kind of stab in through its chest and it slumps down spilling blood all over mel not again <laughs> and with <laughs> all of the foes vanquished in this area 
we can hop out of initiative. Zad will say, well, it's a good thing that I found us a nice room to rest in for a bit. And he's just going to walk past everybody into the barracks. <laughs> Short rest wouldn't, wouldn't, be, wouldn't hurt, that's for sure. Someone shut off the bleed nightlight, please, so I can walk up the stairs. Ugh, fine. So, Zach Hill, what was in that room? Uh, some bugbears. That's all? And they're now all littering the hallway. Zad's kind of standing at the door, looking at him like, well, there's like a table and a bunch of beds. And it looks like a barricade be... that you knocked over to get the door open. And the uh, barricade that I knocked over to get the door open. <laughs> is the door across no. the room barricaded? So, it is before not. We... So, Zad, yeah. before we take an, an arrest here, it wasn't that uh, skull you said that we kill they might come back shouldn't we get the, away from this place at least this room yeah where is that in relation to us where was that I think it was right by the bellows yeah it fell by the bellows yeah, I, know. I think we should probably get away from it as much as we can if it is supposed to well, come back I don't know if they can open doors I feel like kind of bite the knob Yes, but do we do we even, do we even want to to try? Is there is there another way out of that that, that place where you're yes. at? There's another door. I don't know where it goes. Oh God! But they were. It seemed like they were trapped. They said something about they killed the skull, which we did. I think they were trapped. Yeah. Like we're gonna get trapped in there too. So that's why I'm saying we probably should. Get out of this uh, forge or whatever it is. Does someone want to fill me in and tell me why we want to run away so badly? What? <sighs> Blowing <Fine>. skulls. <sighs> yeah. Uh, flaming, soul. Right? flaming glowing skull. Yeah. Yeah. And where did it come from and where did it go? Oh, it's, it's right. It's right there. Uh, what color was just pointed the skull by the bellows? It's right there. You can see it. You would see a th piles of bones amongst the. It's it's full of bodies in here. Old, all old except for the bugbear bodies. A lot of old, decrepit, decaying bones and bodies. So you're scared of a skull. Well, it, it will come back. Maybe a skull. To life. It almost killed all of us. It it will come back. But I believe we have a little bit of time, at least. I forget the exact, you know, time frame, but can I do a yeah. history or an arcana check to you see if I did. know how long it was? Oh, you did? And you didn't. Uh, you weren't sure when. Okay. Um, I don't think we should take the chance, Ed. I think we should get that as far away as possible from it. Can we break the skull? No. It doesn't really do much. It'll just reconstitute itself. We need holy water, if anything, to bless it. And yeah, Cal and the skulls that look bit like white claw. You, after you kill it, it comes back. Mm. Yeah. Are we are we not supposed to trust the skull the way we don't trust white claw? Or I say no, that aloud again. We trust white claw. We don't trust the skull. Hey, right, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we could probably rest in the in the room where we took a long rest rather than here near the skull. If we really want to take a short rest. Or go back up north. Yeah, as you guys have probably been awake for about an hour. Mm, gosh. Sounds <laughs> like literally like we need to take a step out of these caves and come back in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> or find a nice, safe place to camp out overnight because We've us just... spellcasters are kind of tired right now. 
Oh, if we um if we go back to where we rested before, I can show Callan the the note we wrote him. Oh yeah. No, yeah, that's we a can great show idea. the note we wrote him. Yeah, great as as they're talking about. Yeah, great idea. I'm combing through the corpses for money. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> Do that in a uh, bit. Give me an investigation check. It was a 14. Most of these bugbears, the ghouls definitely have nothing on them, but most of these bugbears also don't have much aside from the hide armor, the shields, the morning stars, and a handful of javelins amongst them. The largest amongst them, though, does have a pouch containing some copper, electrum, a pair of agates, and a familiar potion. Potion of healing. Another potion for the doctor? Hopefully next time I'll be around to save you. And I won't be napping. Um, can Dad do a quick investigation check in uh, the room where the buggers were? Uh, Looking for... Yeah, you can look about the room. I would say no investigation check necessary. You start scanning the room, looking to see... It's a bunch of stone bunks in here. Uh, looks like there was probably like marks of a table on the northwestern corner. Uh, that is okay. part of what has been barricaded up against the, the door there. It has been broken. Okay. Uh, a dull burning brazier, and there is another door on the other side. Hmm. Don't open it. No, don't. Yeah, don't open the door. Listen to them. Do it. Flip <laughs> a coin. Flip a coin. <laughs> eh. Not we yet. should. Let's. <sighs> That'll come back out to the group. Yeah. Right, right, so whatever you think we should go out. Rest, we should go there. Let's head out. Mm -hmm. What I'd say, go back to where we took a long rest. I mean, that's probably the safest safest place we can go. And then go back up north. I don't know what everyone thinks, but I think that's our best bet. I agree. I think we should get out of here. So you guys... As we're talking, Mel converts her two sorcery points into a spell point. Okay. Getting, getting a first level spell back. Oh. Uh, so, are you guys planning on heading out of the the mines, or are you planning on just going back to the place where you took a rest the night before? Back where we took where we took a rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back where we took a rest. I agree. So, are we going back to? We've been gone an hour. Uh, Cal, you've been gone for about five hours. You're sleeping. Uh, well. A long it's... rest amount of time plus like three hours. So, Cal, you've been. You know, the, the room that you were at was similar to the room that you're staring at now, uh, where you first encountered the, the trio of ghouls. Uh, and wandering the mines, you saw there's a large room to the south, which was empty aside from the. Well, there's some furniture in there. You didn't get a chance to inspect it much, but the, the ghouls were hanging out in there. Uh, but they're wanting to go back east, is what it sounds like. Let's go before that thing wakes back up, if, if it ever will. I can maneuver you around. Thank you. Uh, maneuver away. Do some, like, highlights and drop you off in certain places, as you see. Uh, Cal, this is a large, starry cavern uh, with a couple of buildings inside of it. Or is this building here? Looks like the doors are rusted shut or uh, melted shut. Uh, but there was another door on the north side. I uh, come down to here, and there is another building. The doors have been knocked off of its hinges and are resting on the ground where you see a sign in uh, dried blood that says Isabel was here. And then an arrow pointing northward. Or Idjit was here. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. See, I, I thought it would make you laugh. Very subtle. 
Ah, uh, well, yeah, that's not where you were. Finally. <laughs> so is that the room we're staying in, this one? Yes, sir. Do we, do How we long know are we staying? An hour? Short rest? Uh, we, just, we just left. The south side of this room is like a... Uh, looks like a closet that has been caved in. <clears throat> but there's a door. Left, uh... Uh, not really a door, just a it's a caved in area. Can I inspect it further to make sure it's not? Yeah, give me an investigation. A secret passage. It looks like a typical cave in. Odd to see one inside of a building, but you probably figure if given enough time, you could probably unearth whatever was in it. Time and effort. I'm going to do that while they're on their short break because I'm fine. Fair enough. So you guys planning on sticking around for an hour? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm going to lay on this bed. Mm -hmm. There are two really old broken beds in here. Uh, we'll say Cal, since you missed out, roll me a d20. And roll me a d12 as well. Oh. All right. So, during a short rest, would I be able to? Because it says during a uh, bonus action. Is that only in combat I can turn uh, slots into? No, you can, you can do it at will. Okay, so right now I can. Okay. Yeah, you so, can just do it willy nilly. It'll just convert a bunch if you want. Or, well, you know, right. not I mean, however right. many you got. Yeah. Babe. Babe. I'm a mop. A mop. A mop. Oh. He can't get the door shut, and the handle of the mop is stuck in the door, and he can't <laughs> see it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so, you guys are. Taking this short rest, Cal is starting to unearth this. Cal, give me an athletics check. Oh, shit. As you guys are kind of lounging about for an hour, hear this stone rubble being strewn about the place with a 15. Uh, eventually, you do unearth the closet here. Uh, it looks to be an old a couple of bookshelves in here. Uh, full of dusty old tombs. If anyone's got the magic fingers, they may want to take a look at this. I probably can't use it, but you will can. Oop, I didn't even do that. Oop, stop it! Uh, so Mel goes and takes a look. That girl's going to be right, right behind her. You're going around looking at it. looks like a lot of these dusty old books are nearly falling apart. Uh, but let me double check something. No, wrong one. Uh, you would find a small bit of writing. Uh, written in, it's actually translated both to from Dwarvish, Gnomish, and Common. Written in all three languages. Yes! Uh, <laughs> but reading about this, looks like it dates back to over 500 years ago. It speaks of clans of dwarves and gnomes making an agreement known as the Fandelver's Pact which they would share with this rich mine that you assume you're in called Wave Echo Cave. It seems to be wondrous of the waves and echoing, but in addition to its mineral wealth, the mine did contain a great magical power, apparently. Human spellcasters allied themselves with dwarves and gnomes to channel and bind the energy into a great forge called the Forge of Spells where magic items could be crafted with uh, relative ease. And it seems to go on and talk about how times were good and 
the nearby town of Vendalen prospered. Uh, but then it kind of recounts about the mines being under siege. Bandits from the north were, were sweeping through the area, laying waste to Vandalen and eventually to the mines. There's a small recounting of a, a powerful bandit force reinforced by like evil mercenary wizards attacking Wave Echo Cave in hopes to seize its riches and magic treasures. And all of them, what kind of last entry would kind of just recount that dwarves, gnomes, and human spellcasters were def defending the Forge of Spells as best they could. And it speaks about the worry about the damage it could do to the Forge and the Cavern itself. It could even cause a collapse of any out outward tunnels. What could collapse the the, out, the outer tunnels? The forge uh, the, itself. The, the spell battles and damage to the forge. Yeah. But that's pretty much what it what it details in both common, gnomish and dwarvish. Nice little bedtime reading. I would take the book. It's it's definitely scraps and bits and pieces, but there's there's some information in there. <clears throat> I'm willing to bet that that spell forge is what costs your family members their lives. Yeah, they died looking for a treasure. No better way for a dwarf to go. We still have one more to find, by the way. So, Colin, I said this was about 500 years ago. Were you around then? I'm a wee lass. I'm like 80, 90. Oh, okay. Thought you were like 300. Thank you, I think. <laughs> Not sure how to take that. How do you judge if a, how old is a dwarf? I don't know. We go by the length of the beard, usually. I'm a short beard. Ah. Uh -huh. They get really, really long. Even on the females. Terrifying. <laughs> Nothing like really a beard. <laughs> I wish I could grow a beard. <laughs> Can we roll it? Callan, is it hard? This? You you can Kellen, is it get, hard? you can get your short rest in. <laughs> Wish I could grow a beard. I'll contemplate him about it. Who's in the door? Calvin. She's saying Lock that half in. awake. <laughs> uh, while they're resting, I'll stand guard. All right. Well, you would have been digging, so they they have already okay, essentially taken their rest at this point. Oh wait, uh, dungeon. Meister Master. Yes. Uh, how do I do the... Do I just... the, you, the you How many... You click yep. where it says hit dice and you can roll up to your level, which is four. Uh, just remember when you get a long rest, you only get half of them back. So if you use all four, tomorrow you're okay. only going to have two to play with. Okay. Um, Sometimes it's it's not a bad thing to use all of them. Okay. While we all have a moment. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And then I'm going to uh, wait. And then also click the short rest button, which will replenish certain things for some of you. Mostly Isabel, you'll learn when they get stuff back on a short rest. Um, yeah. And I. this would be the time to use my second win. Would it you not? had already used it. You have not had a chance to regain it back. So you get it back after your short rest, though. Okay. But, like, coming back from my short rest, I'd want to use it, correct? You can, and then you wouldn't have it again. It, it depends. I would wait until after you roll your hit dice to okay. see if you want to use your second win. You didn't have one to use before the short rest, 
after completing it, you get your second win back. Uh, so you, then you wouldn't have it later, yeah. is all. It's up to you. Okay. I'm just not liking what my health is looking like, so. Well, if you've got, you, if you've got more hit dice, you can spend them. If you don't, then you can't. So wait, 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 wait. On short rest, I thought I could only use two. Did you I miss? You can use. Did I miss you can that? use all four. Oh when, right, right. When right, you okay. get a long rest, you only get half of your level in hit dice back. So you only get two back when you get a long rest. So meaning tomorrow, if you were to use all four of your hit dice today, tomorrow you wouldn't be able to use but two all day. That's all. okay. Okay, so I think. I think I used all four, or no, I would have to press it two more times. Okay. Yeah. Uh, quick. Once the channel divinity comes back on a short rest, right? I don't know. Does it say it does? It says short or long rest, so I assume that's either or. Yep. There is a short rest button on everyone's character sheet, so make sure you hit yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Certain things are tied to it, and it should replenish that if you've used it up. Just don't hit the long rest button please yeah no it didn't give it me back uh, i might not have tied it to it then okay i'll just do I a little i can change okay. it later yeah you just a little plus one uh oh. but you guys do finish your short rest uneventfully other than uncovering this book that has pages falling out of it but some information still able to be gathered what are you guys up to Zad would say, um, do you think this uh, magical forge could have something to do with the whole deal with the spider and the red bands and what they're looking for down here? Possibly. Does Zad kill relight Megan's sword or Isabel's sword? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Yay! The real awesome. question is, what's a kumquat? Uh, never heard of that, but I feel filthy. Get your mind out of the gutter. It's a piece of fruit. Once it's in there, it's tough to get it out. Okay, so what's the point? Are, you, are we still talking about kumquats? <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> All right, fine. Have your inside jokes then. I'll go over to Cal and I'll whisper. I'm like, listen, I have no idea what they're talking about either. It's okay. It's okay. Shit, I'm on the same level as you now. <laughs> yeah, it's me. great. It's great okay. down here. <laughs> it's great All down right. here. Did we move uh, north? Are we sure. headed out? North it is. I mean, we were we were gonna head nord before going to the forge. Of, the oh, little, okay. uh, almost, so I guess probably yeah. the next step. Yeah, let's do it. All right, all right. To the north. As you all start to head out, uh, that'll probably be a good spot for us to take a little five ten minute break. And we'll okay. pick up there here in a few. You guys got a got a little short rest and you survived. I am going to give uh, inspiration to Cal for the calling of the two uh, ghouls, as well as Mel for even though it nearly cost Isabel her life, if you didn't do that, it could have cost more than that uh, with the lightning bolt. So very good use of a scroll. Great use of the scroll. So I'm going to give Mel, Mel and Cal some uh, inspiration there. And we'll we'll pick up there at about eh, 35, 40 after, something like that. But, okay. Uh, okay. Pick up there here in a few. We'll be back, Twitch. See you soon, Twitch. Funny enough, I still haven't used the inspiration.
Uh, so, yeah, uh, welcome back to our Vandelver and Below. Uh, last we left off, our heroes uh, were finished up, well, a very tense situation involving ghouls and bugbears, but prevailed. Uh, Cal showed his face again as he is apparently asleep elsewhere in the cave. Uh, but afterwards, you came back to what you imagined was a safe space previously as you did bed down for a whole night there. Took a bit of an hour breather, found some writings, and kind of actually figured out what this whole cave was about. This mine, Vandelver's Pact. Uh, but a little rested up, uh, you guys gathered yourselves and are starting to continue back on the trail heading northward northward yeah. yeah all right and that little bit of uh kind of minerals glistening in the light as isabel's light is shining through i leave this building head back north next to that other building and west of here is where you encountered that skull and north is where you hear that booming wave noise from how do you proceed well in uh Avoidance of the school, I say we continue north. Yeah. Nice. All right. And this is that side door that Zachiel you checked. And you do see stairs. Or, well, rough hewn stairs uh, heading south, heading downward. Not southward. Downward. I say we go down the stairs. I don't know what. All right. Anyone objects or did we check this door we just passed? Zach, you'll listen to it. Yeah, I don't think I heard anything. And the double door at the front of this building was the hinges were melted shut. Yeah. Uh, Zad would kind of in a low voice say. Um, perhaps we do a little reconnaissance before we just head down the stairs. Okay, you want to take a little sneak peek around the corner? Start like? Uh, I can't. You can't, it's just stairs, so there's a lighting thing there. I can get rid of it. Alright. Uh, I want to go sneakily, All so right. can I roll give, for a stealth? Give me a stealth check. You feel confidently stealthy as you tiptoeing along. As you enter this area, a loud boom is easily heard. As you would, this narrow ledge kind of overlooks a large cavern, houses a surging, seething body of water. Rhythmic booming heard throughout the mines, much louder here. Regular intervals fresh surge of water funnels into this chamber and slams against the wall just below the ledge. Echo suggests that the cave might be one arm of a much larger cavern to the northeast. Come on down! All right. As you can yeah. definitely hear the sounds of oh. rushing surf down there. I would move down towards Cal. Join him. I'll follow. All right. Follow behind Isabel. Mel will take the last. All right. Okay, coming in uh -huh. here, Cal, you would see a channel heading southward uh, of where you're at. Uh, it kind of 
looks like it goes into the smelter cavern area where that channel kind of was going through uh, the water wheel. But the ledge continues around to the northwest. So, where do we go <laughs> from here? Uh, I've kind of kept going, now. so. As you, you would yeah. see Cal kind of creeping along the side. Yeah, um, Zad would fall, Cal. Can Far enough behind. Crashing uh, yeah, like yeah, the crashing blank, blank, blank. The water seems to rise and and drop every minute or so. It, ri it takes about a minute for it to rise up to the edge of this cliff here. And it gets like right up next to it to where a little bit of water spills out onto it. It's been eroding for years. Or it's every two minutes, sorry. <laughs> Uh, but are you guys just letting Cal go about 100 feet ahead? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Cal, continuing on, let me tell you, before you go too far. Okay. Uh, double check where you're at here. Yeah. Uh, yep. this passageway here is barely four feet high as you start to enter into it. Obstructed by rounded boulders and pebbles. Looks as though it might have been an old stream bed, but no water flows here now. Hmm. I'm gonna push on. Alright. The rest of you guys just hanging out in here? Uh, no, we probably should. I'm go gonna follow. Uh, no, you guys are gonna have to like crouch down, except for Mel, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was about yeah. to ask, how quickly does it get to four feet? Uh, right at the edge. It gets okay. it gets super cramped. Uh, but as you guys are walking along, uh, as the water rises. Uh, does a 24 hit Isabel? A 24 hits Isabel. Seemingly grabbing your sword and grabbing you as well, a giant octopus makes itself known <laughs> as you take eight points of bludgeoning damage, are restrained by it, and it kind of like grabbing onto your sword trying to pull at the light. And we're going to roll some initiative. What the heck? Of there's course a, there's a giant octopus, a giant octopus, in, the octopus in here. Why wouldn't there I'll be? say, Alva, what are you doing? <laughs> As you feel it kind of crushing onto your ribs. Ugh. Gross. Uh, change of music. Just a slight change. Oh, this one. This track. Yeah, this, this one's track. a banger. Uh, as Mel, you are up first, seeing this, uh, seeing this octopus wrangle Isabel at the edge of the water there. Mm -hmm. What's Mel doing? <laughs> And all Mel sees is the tendril. You can see the octopus kind of sticking its head up now. At first, it was just the tendril, and then the rest of the octopus is like it's half submerged, so you can, you can see it. A little bit of foaming water up there. Mm -hmm. One second. I will say, Cal. Unfortunately, you're doing other things, so you're not going to be. Doing my... You're not going to be involved in this. So, seeing what's happening, she mm -hmm. attempts to use her one level one spot spell for sleep to try to put it to sleep. 
All right, roll me uh -huh. some sleep points. It's five. The octopus or no, Isabel? No, Mel. <laughs> As you I'm trying to put ca that. cast sleep on the octopus area. Thirty-two. I want you to ping on the map where you're centering that. Did you see the ping? I did not. Uh, think of the cross. So you have the token right in the center of the crosshair. Okay, so right, right there, essentially. Yeah. All right. You got it. Uh. Can magic put white claw to sleep? Uh, don't think so. I think it's he doesn't need to sleep. Uh, is it this one? Magic can't put you to sleep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Isabel, you pass out. <laughs> what? Yep. <laughs> 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 Wait, <laughs> wait, within 20 feet. Actually, that's much worse. Uh, mm -hmm. Mel. I'm asleep. Mel, you pass out. Yay! You put yourself <laughs> to sleep. As this, kind of, <laughs> this fairy dust just kind of fills the area and kind of starts <laughs> clinging to Mel as Mel, you just kind of pass out right there. Mel, do you snore? I think I do. <laughs> What's your snore sound? <laughs> Isabel. Oh, yeah. Hard, hard to hear it over the, the frothing, booming waves in here. Uh, but that'll end Mel's turn. Taking us to White Claw. Great job. Her own Keep it up. I'm Proud smell. of you. Yeah. Proud of you. All right. I am going to use a... Uh, mine sliver. Oh. Uh, did it, it, did it sleep or not? Sorry. It put you to sleep. But not to it. No. What, <laughs> it, what it does is it takes the Sorry. lowest hit point first and puts it to sleep. So you know it has more hit points than Mel does. <laughs> Alright, so a mind sliver... Gotta make a big ol' intelligence save. Excuse me. Uh, has it got a big ol' one? It'll take four points of psychic damage and now has disadvantage on its next saving throw. And, yeah, that'll be it, because I can't move. Alright. Cal, unfortunately, you not there's there's this booming wave behind you. you no sign of your comrades at the moment do you continue do to, I, to look further i hear a giant boom behind me that's the the waves making that noise every two minutes oh no i'd proceed forward thinking they're trailing behind all right i'll get to you in a minute then okay Zadkiel? What are you up to? Who's muted? Yeah. Which I will say, I do hate the new mute symbol on top of the token. Sorry about that. You're, you're good. Um, Change on Fuji Tech. I don't like the way it looks. Zad's going to throw a javelin and sort of. All right. Octopus. Throwing a javelin at the octopus. Let's see it. <laughs> 22 will hit. As your javelin kind of sticks into the side of the octopus for six points of piercing damage. Anything else for Zad? That'll be it. That's going to take us to the octopus. Uh, the octopus is going to continue to grapple onto 
Isabel. Now at advantage. She starts squeezing tightly, getting a 22 to hit Isabel. That hits. As you take 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Y'all, I just had a short rest. Mm hmm. That's how it goes. Uh, yeah. And then the octopus proceeds to drag her into the water. <gasps> a good 20 feet. <laughs> While I'm asleep? You're not asleep. Just Isabel's asleep. Or just just, Isabel, just Mel's asleep. Oh, wait. I thought I was asleep. No, because uh, I, I misread. So it's just, just oh, Mel fell asleep. Oh, that's why I did the snoring sound. And then I was like, Mel. Nope. Yep. How do you snore? <laughs> it's just, it's just, just Mel is asleep as the octopus pulls away. Uh, White Claw, you can make a claw attack if you want, or you don't have claw attacks anymore, do you? No, but I can make. No. You can make You've been declawed. Attack. He's been declawed. Oh my! Yeah. How inhumane! White Claw <laughs> has no claws. Yep, they're blind. It's from clawing so out of the grave. That'll oh my hit. god! That'll, that'll hit it. For four points of bludgeoning damage. Yeah, they became blunt, unfortunately. As this octopus will take four points of damage and just kind of pulls Isabel down. Uh, taking us to your turn, Isabel. You're in the water, restrained. It's not a good time. It's starting to, it's going to try to drown you. <sighs> That's what it looks like. That's what it feels like. Wow. So, okay. So I'm just going to assume that, um, I cannot use my sword because I'm restrained. You can use it. It's at disadvantage. Same for an axe? Same for anything you want to do right now. Okay. Because Even if I use... Because you're restrained by the creature. And so Even an if anything I, like... you try to do is going to be more difficult. Okay. Even biting? Even biting. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. If I use... You would notice the water in here is very warm, though. Oh. So at least that's nice. I'm I'm pleasantly dying. Excellent. Yep. Um, or maybe you just... You know. You know what happens when water is warm. Yeah, if I, if I felt a little nervous. Maybe the octopus is nervous. Yeah. I don't know. That's how embarrassing. Uh, what um, are you doing? Second wind. All right, bonus action. Second wind. Roll me a your second wind dice. Second. You do have a button, or or you can dice. just roll a d10 plus plus four. Whatever is easiest. Uh, All right, did you get nine points of healing back. Yeah. Bolster yourself, getting ready for the next barrage of tentacles. All right, and I'm gonna roll at that disadvantage. Using just uh, my dragon slayer. All right, trying just, to yeah. get your big sword out and just trying to whack at it. Yeah. Give me an attack. I'm trying. Um. Oh. 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 Well, at, dis oh. at disadvantage, so roll again. No. Yep. Um. Um. There's no way to keep it. It's a disadvantage. Wait, where did I roll it again? So getting a 15 to hit does still hit. So roll me oh, some yes, damage. Okay. It's just not a crit. Oh, wait. And can I make this? Oh, no. What happened? Oh, no. I opened up the. It can't off. be a power attack um, anymore or a great weapon mastery attack. You've oh, already, I know that. You've um, rolled. But you can use superior, superior yeah. die, whatever. Uh. I did it. Um, I don't think I've used superiority dice yet. You got a short rest, so all of them came back. All right. Um, you know what? I'm gonna make it a menacing attack. All right. <laughs> gotta make a wisdom save. And don't forget to roll the the damage for the superiority die as well. The superiority die. Oh wait. Under, under okay. global damage modifiers. What's the damage modifier? As it will take the damage, and it is frightened of you. 
And I'll take 18 points of damage. As you slash into it. Anything else for Isabel? Um. No. All right. Can wait. I'm. I'm okay. I can't swim away. No, you are. You are no. restrained by this creature. Uh, quite well. Okay. It's, okay. it's got suckers and stuff. I'll take us to Alva. Okay. All right. Alva immediately shifts into a giant crab. Okay. Get that, right. get that crab out. Crab versus octopus. That's a giant <laughs> crab? Have you seen a crab the size of a person before? Person. Yes. I, I, that's pretty giant to me. <laughs> I've also seen them the size of cars before. <laughs> well... All right, I'm going to move 25 feet into the water. All right. I can't really move my token, though. I got you. It's not really, it's not letting me yeah, into the water. Yeah, there's a barrier there, yeah. Uh, so start swimming 25 feet out. You can get up to the, the octopus. Yes. And then I'm going to attack. Give, give me a crab claw. Crab claw. Nine is going to be a miss. All right. Going to snip, snip, and the, the octopus is just kind of whirling <laughs> around in the water. Uh, but I'll take us to Mel, who's sleeping. <laughs> uh, and then White Claw. Gonna try a chill touch towards that. Uh, All right. Big octopus. That's going to hit it. For eight points in a crowd damage. It's octopus blood filling the water pretty well now. And that's it. I'm just gonna move a bit closer to the edge, and that's gonna be it. Alright. Sad kill. Yes, sir. What you doing? He's gonna toss another jab on. Alright. <clears throat> Give me that javelin to us. 15's gonna hit it. For five points of piercing, there's another javelin sticking into the side of this octopus. Anything else for Zad? It's gonna be it for Zad. That'll take us to the octopus. <laughs> uh. Isabel, you would feel the suckers kind of release you as an inky cloud fills the water as no one can see in the water for the moment. The octopus lets you go and retreats. And unfortunately, you can't attack it because you can't see it. Oops. As, as it leaves the area alone seemingly thwarted the giant octopus. We will end initiative there. And meanwhile, cow, 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 cow. I'm gonna tell you what you see from this vantage point. I actually need to get rid of a lighting layer for a second. Oh, I wish I could just yeah, I can kind of get rid of it. Because, Cal, you see a lot there. You may not think no, you I see don't. a lot, but you will. <laughs> uh, with your dark vision. Looking out. Uh, this space in here. Is... A wide rift filling the eastern half of this cavern. You can see it's much larger than what you see here. Small stream pours from the west uh, before tumbling into the rift and flowing to the north. Secured to iron stakes along the western edge of the rift are several ropes 
leading to the chasm floor. You see a drow, supervisor, barking orders, and elven. Or actually, in goblin. Uh, at the two bugbears. They look to be sifting through the rubble at the bottom. As uh, two other bugbears stand guard. And it looks like the, the bugbears in there are trying to... They're looking for something. Do I... Would I know that the drow... Would I recognize the drow from somewhere? Uh, no, you haven't seen this drow. Okay. I would hoof it back to the group to give them the intel. All right. I would show up and see that uh, Isabel's soaking wet, and I would be like, Egypt fell in, didn't she? You fell in. No, she was dragged I in. I didn't fall in, okay? Who dragged her in? A giant on the bus. What? Can you fucking stop getting into fights without me around? Well, maybe if you stayed with us, you could be included. <laughs> and then I'm all asleep. As, as, it, as it's how it happens, right around the corner, there's a bunch of bugbears and a drow. It looks like they're digging around for something. And you so... would see that Mel is also asleep. <laughs> Boop. Boop. I just poke her in the forehead. I'm gonna lean down to Mel and be like, "Just like, are you okay? Is are you still it, asleep? Is Alva still a crab? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stay a okay. crab. Hell? You talk? Like, so yeah. when you talk, are you like talking like a normal person, she but in a crab talk. body? She can't talk. No, at all. Okay, all right. no. You're hearing. You're hearing snip snap. My claws. Clip clap. Maracas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we know how long she's gonna be asleep. Does anyone know uh, how the magic spell work for her sleeping? Do we know if she's gonna be asleep for long? If not, we can't just carry her. Did you kill the octopus? Uh, not really. It ran away. Cause but I we're scared assume, it. We're assuming it did. Because you can see the uh, the ink down there, and we lost sight of it. It Maybe. did that whole thing that octo octopuses are uh, popular Octopi. for doing. Actually, it's octopuses. So, it's octopuses, okay. and I'm not going to. Is it really? Yeah, it's it's really not, I'm looking it up. It's just a magic <laughs> battle, shall we? <laughs> you know what? Now that I think about it, in Alba. Oh, with the crab, you might agree. The water was kind of warm. It was. Yeah. Yes, Alva, it was. It was like a hot tub. No, no, no. We wouldn't boil you in there. <laughs> okay. So, should we just, are we just going to carry a mail until she wakes up? Uh, Mel, you wake up to a to a pinch, and there's a crab right next to you. Giant crab, what? bigger than you. You're right, right over there. Realize that it's not a monster. Uh, I mean, you, I'm gonna shift other, back you, into Alba. I was gonna say your other companions <laughs> are standing around. Or Mel right? Fireball. Like, seems, seems like they're in conversation. Fireball. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Yeah. Did, did you have a good uh, nap? Did I put myself to sleep? Yes. You did. Yes, you did. Oh, fuck. You so Egypt nearly drowns. And the little one puts herself to sleep, and I miss it. God damn it! Well, then don't, don't walk in front of us. <laughs> it does, Mel. Don't worry. I didn't see a thing. What happened to the octopus? It ran away. I'm assuming, scared I'm it. Assuming it did. Mm. I don't... I would move moment? forward, just in case it does come back. Yeah, let's get out of here. I, I didn't right. enjoy being all slimy. Got well, now that with, you're uh, all... Two two of Zadkiel's javelins too. 
Oh. So now that you're all awake, like I said, across we at the end of this tunnel is a wee bit of a, a creek or a river, small river. And across that is four bugbears and a drow, and it looks like drow's are in order them around. Three of the bugbears are in the chasm, or in the rift. One of the bugbears and the drow are on the other side. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Oh. All right, well, let's go. Well, there's yeah. quite a bit, there's a quite a bit of distance from the mouth of the calf until them. So yeah. we'd actually... Go ahead, yeah. Did you hear what what they were saying? Did you hear any? They were saying anything? We were speaking a language. Would I know? Would I know you've what heard, they were speaking? I know. I've heard goblin before. Yeah, they, they were speaking gobble. Oh, gobble. Gobble. <laughs> gobble. <laughs> You're speaking turkey. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> gobble, gobble, gobble. So, uh, but there's quite a distance in order to engage them, so it would end up. You know, using a lot of long no. bay, uh, uh, distance I'd weapons. Say, I'd say let's try not engage him if we can. It's right now. Are we here to give out hugs? I did not say that. No, no, we're not. We're here to get money. But <laughs> what? Right? right? And right. save my third cousin. Oh, exactly. right, your cousin. Your cousin. On the yeah, other yeah. side. Yeah. Until we can figure out if they know anything about that, I would rather them not knowing that we're there. How do you intend to do that? Are you invisible? You 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 managed to, to get close to them. And oh, I'm sneaky, know. sneaky. You're a dead kitty cat that's declawed. <laughs> <laughs> do you want a trip? I still got my claws. They're a bit dull, but I still got my claws. Thank you. Uh, I, I, what's your plan? If you want, you could sneak up there and give it a go. But I'm telling you, it's quite a distance. It's going to be tough getting on, uh, down the cavern, across the creek, well, and into them. I can, the rift was like 20 feet deep. I can sneak past what. What? Uh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. What do you mean by a rift? You mean the actual like it's like a little the, valley and the, that's yeah, twenty the feet. Yeah, the twenty is twenty feet deep where that creek ran right. through, and the drow sorry. and the bugbear are on the other side of that rift. I can Go ahead. sneak past them. You remember how we got into a uh, Kragma Castle with the the black inky shit, the black the the black cloud. Yes, darkness. I, I can sneak, but no one else can be around me. Unless you're, you want to go completely blind. So would they just see a big black cloud moving? Yeah. Yeah, that's not conspicuous at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if I get close to them, they're, they're just going to be blind. Do you think maybe this water down here leads to the creek that's through the cross? I mean... Uh, Isabel, was it any deep? Do you think you did you touch the bottom? Um, this is about no, 30 feet I'd... deep. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't touch the bottom. I just realized it was very warm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think any of us are good swimmers. And we were. And, is it, is, and isn't there a giant octopus still in there somewhere? Exactly yeah. what I was about to say. Yeah. And a bunch of us are wearing heavy armor, so. Probably not a good deal. All right, um, so hold on a second. The way that... Uh, I think so, there might be a way to it if we go back to the big foundry room. I have a suggestion. Just thought of it. I could make a giant fog cloud and we emerge from that. So we put a fog cloud in that distance between us and them yeah but we're in a cave it's gonna be a a bit weird to just have a fog in a cave like that oh, oh, i'm not trying to hide i'm just trying to get close so we no, can i know but i mean they're gonna see they're gonna uh -huh. assume something's going something's wrong but they won't know from where until the last moment oh. true I'm thinking something like World War One, where they put out the fog clouds before the soldiers. 
What's World War One? It's when the dwarves kicked your ass constantly. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm bold. Okay. How embarrassing. So so why don't you do the mist thing and the darkness thing? There's no wrong yeah, there's no yeah. wrong wrong thing about you getting in position in your darkness and then we come out like fucking superheroes oh, out of the mist. The darkness I can put it anywhere anywhere I see, or I can put it on an object if I want to and carry it around with me. How large is your blackness? Ooh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Hello. 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 Six. Yeah, no. That's range. Uh, it's a 20 foot radius. Or 15, 15, 15, 15 foot radius. Mm -hmm. and fog cloud, I think, is a 20 foot radius. Mm -hmm. And if I increase it by. if I. I'll have to upcast it, so it's going to be 40 feet. 40 feet of fog? Mm hmm. Can we see through the fog? No. Hmm. So, even myself, I'll be blind going through. With the darkness, yeah, I, can, I can guide us out. We can surprise them that way. Yeah, but then there's going to be this big floating ball of darkness. If I if we if I put it a little bit away from from their sight, maybe that could that could work. Yeah. My vote is try to find another way in. It's a it's a good distance. I think if we go through the foundry room, I think it is adjacent to it, unless uh, potential risen flaming. Surely, in there. from what I can remember, it looks like it's through that little shitty barracks. Was there a door to the north? It was a door to the east, or no, I mean the west. So yeah. maybe that leads. Maybe that could lead to it. If it goes yeah, west right. and then turns north for some reason, it could lead to it. You said it was a drow and a few bugbears. Big bugbears. Four of them. I'd rather fight bugbears and drow than that skull again. I mean... So you'd rather go forward on the field than go back through the... Personally, side. yes. Uh, Do you not all remember what happened with that skull? He cast a fireball and I, we pretty much destroyed it. Uh, yeah, but, after, but most, like, it damaged a lot of us. Okay, we don't know that it exists uh, or doesn't. And if Colin can sneak up close and see it or scope it. And if it's there, yeah, we'll go through the field. If not, we could go around. I just don't understand. Uh, uh, risk the skull or definitely get beat on by four very large bugbears and a drow who probably knows magic as well. Don't, don't we have... We, we look... Either way, we got to decide quick, because we're not going to stay here with the octopus still around. Mm -hmm. So how about we just move further up, away from the from the water, not on the sledge? You can see a little place up there that we could probably get away from the water. Or just move you, up there. You want to you wanna cram into the four-foot-tall tunnel? <clears throat> no, around right there. The, the four-foot tunnel starts there. Yeah, around here is it's where it starts there. to get like cramped. Yeah, right, right, like near where Zadkiel is. Okay, around, around here. Well, we can probably then in so, that case we go around here, yeah, behind this is, us, and through there. So this is a water feed. It had to have come through there. So it has to be another way into it. 
There's no way those fat fucking bug bugbears got through that little tunnel. <laughs> There's got to be another way in. You got a yeah, point. I mean, I guess we should that. go through the, uh, try to go through the, uh, the, the water wheel uh, passage or whatever it was. The foundry room? Yeah, the yeah. foundry room. Let, let me take point. At the very least, I could try to turn. I mean, okay. I'm not sure how you're going to. So you're thinking if we follow the canal to the the foundry room, perhaps on the other side of the canal tunnel, possibly. I think that turns north way too soon. I think it's just going to put us where. Well, I guess it could turn, but I didn't see it. I, like I said, there's got to be another way in. So I, I would want to go through the barracks. Take that east door and hopefully it turns north. How high is the uh, the uh, uh, canal? Uh, about <laughs> six, seven feet high. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm with Cal on this one about checking the barracks. <clears throat> Someone's going to have to help me out. Let's go ahead. Right. Zad, Zad, Zad climbs out and offers a hand to Callan to uh, uh, find the thing to climb up and help the others. Yeah, exactly. you all climb up out of, out of the canal. Yep. Easy enough to do. <laughs> so we're pushing on to the uh, to the barracks room. Yeah. Yep. All right. Heading back over the the bodies that you left there just an hour ago. That's just as you left it. Do we want to try to secure that door before we open the next one? Well, there's really nothing. Unless you're worried of, oh, you're talking about the skull. The one, one that was barricaded previously. The yeah. octopus. Because uh, the skull had a bunch of zombie friends, and well, there's a bunch of bodies laying outside there. Okay. Uh, idea. So I will close the door and I will cast. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Um, yeah, no, it's us. Uh, oh. Um, well, I'll go to my spells. Hold on, I'm sorry. Arcane lock. Yes, uh, arcane lock, yeah. Cool. And what does it look like as Cal cast this arcane lock on it? I do a couple of weird symbols with my hand and just kind of gold dust sprinkles down on it and you just hear a loud clunk as it locks. Very well done, sir. Cowan is always full of surprises. That's what your mother said. All right, now I'm going to check this door. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> oh all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot Zad's was, was an orphan. <laughs> My bad. Uh, three, three out of six of you guys are orphans. Uh, well, kind of. <laughs> um, Cow, you go and inspect this door. Give me an investigation check. Oh, Balls. It looks like a door. It doesn't seem to be locked. Guys, I'm just saying there's just enough beds in here for all of us. They're actually double bunks. Made of stone. God, so there's actually, oh my gosh, bunk beds! Actually, actually 12 stone beds in here. And this area looks to have been cleaned a little bit. So are you taking a long rest then? Maybe a, a wee nap? We just slept. <laughs> so no. You didn't sleep at all. You don't need to sleep. You're not part of this conversation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I still need Ram. to rest. It was like two and a half hours ago, so you guys would need to spend like yeah. a full day in there. Day in here. Yeah. Yeah. It's like chilling. Uh, well, maybe so those people off. might be gone. We weren't really want to run into those people. Uh, well, I think we got to keep moving, so. Right. Really... 
The only thing to do is kind of figure it out. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> someone opens the door. Uh, That'd be me. I was like, right. Fair <laughs> enough. Opening the door, uh, you would see what looks to be a hallway beyond. Stairs heading westward down to what looks to be a dark pool within. Uh, but the hallway looks like it runs north to south as well. Okay, Zad would step out. <sighs> to the hallway. I'll follow. And it looks like the hallway is crumbled to the south. Uh, stairs to the north side, going up about 15 or so feet. Stairs descend about 15 or so feet to the west. Uh, into that room with a dark pool. Unsure of what lies above the stairs to the north. We were going north, weren't we? Uh, it, it, the, the, the barn guys are north of us. So we want to go north. Alright. This could go. Be a tough go on there, church boy. Egypt! What? There's supposed to oh, be a fighter. Yeah, I, yeah. What? Get me out of the damn wall, then. I tried. <laughs> All right. What kind of clink clink is it? Like someone digging. Oh. Like, like metal hitting stone. Always trust a dwarf underground. Aye, aye, Captain. Like nowhere else. Thank you, SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, I'll follow up behind Captain. Yeah, what's at the top of the stairs? Alright, uh, going to the top of the steps. Uh, following Cal. I'll get rid of that now. Uh, actually, I'm going to get rid of a couple of lines real quick. Uh, you would see a hallway. <sighs> Stairs heading to the east, and the hallway continues to the west. So I'm going to guess we need to go east. That's heading in the general direction of where the uh, where the work crew is. You want to open the door silently, or there's no door. Is there a door? Yes. Is there no door? No. Uh, well, as far as we know, not. There's Cal, steps. No, I'm not. I'm not seeing anything. Cal and Isabel, as you guys get there, oh, no. uh, a pair of javelins come flying your direction. Great. They come flying from which direction? Down the stairs. Oh my goodness! Getting a so oh so from down there. Yeah, getting a twenty-one That's... on Cal. That'd be Egypt. Oh, and a twenty-two. <laughs> on Isabel. That hits me. As a pair of javelins come flying your direction. Uh, Cal, you take four points of piercing. Isabel, you take three points of piercing damage. As there are two bugbears ready. And... I have got them! We're gonna roll some initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, you would see Javelin strike both Cal and Isabel from down below. Okay. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, she goes up to the top of the stairs there and casts oh she want to get all the way up to the top of the stairs, knowing her. Kind of halfway up the stairs. Okay. And she's going to cast Twilight Sanctuary. Well, not cast, but invoke. I guess. Channel to the As this dull light bleeds out and fills the area. A 30 foot radius. And so, 
go ahead and roll your Twilight Sanctuary hit points or temporary hit points for the turn. 1d4. One D four, no. one D six plus your wisdom modifier, or plus your cleric level. So plus two. Damn good roll. Nice. So you get eight temporary points at the end of your turn. Anything else for Mel? Uh, before she end of her turn, she yells out, "Isabella, what is up there?" And that's it. I'll take us to Isabel. I'll turn back. I'll say, "I see." one bugbear, but there were two javelins. And I'm going to say that while I come out more. Right. Uh, 30. I'm going right in. Uh, right. And I'm going to... Rushing down towards this other this bugbear. Yeah. And I'm going to hit him really hard with my dragon speed. All right. My dragon slayer, my dragon... You know, you know. I know what you mean. Your sword. Your big old my sword. My sword! As you try and swing as hard as you can, he just kind of, like, you know, steps backwards and kind of jukes back as you miss. Uh, I'm going to do action surge. Okay. I'm going to hit at him again. All right. I'm try feeling... and go in for another, like, double swinging. Oh, no! Getting a natural one as you kind of lose your balance. I uh, miss horribly. Anything else? Me. Anything else for Isabel? Don't hurt me. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, taking us to Alva. Unsure of what's happening up there. Um, how much movement do I have? Thirty feet. Thirty feet. Okay. So I'm gonna move as far as I can. Let's see if I can. Um, 15, 20, 25, and then I'm going to move over here for 30. Okay, I kind of see what's going on now. Um, that's as far as I can move. Um, let me see something quickly. Uh, okay, um, so my Thorn Whip is 30 feet, but I'm pretty sure that he's out of range for that. Yeah. Can't really make that. Um, hmm. Well. I have a question. If I, sh if I shift, then I get the movement of whatever I shift into, right? Like if their distance is longer or yes. do I have yes. already used my movement? I would say at this point, you've already used your movement. Okay, so even you, if you, I you shift- could, Yeah, so even if you shift, you won't gain extra movement now that you've, ex essentially your speed now is zero. So if you, you gotcha. shift, if you shift, you could dash though. And with that, with whatever movement you shift into. With, I'm sorry, could you say that again? You can dash as an action. Uh, after you shift, which is a bonus action. Es gotcha. Essentially moving the... And then you can move the speed of the creature. Okay. Alright. Um, I'm going to shift then. As my bonus action, I'll shift into a dire wolf. Alright. Oh, the... That's right. Well, they don't have any night vision for some reason. Is it still very dark in here? Uh, Isabel's giving out some light. Okay. Her, All right. Her yeah, sword. That was, that was the giveaway for, for right. how they knew they were, <laughs> that you were there. All right. All right. So I'll shift. And then you said for my action, I can... You can dash. Yeah. And then you have, I think... 50 feet of movement as a dire wolf? Yeah, 50 feet of movement. So you can, you can get all the way up there. Sorry, I... My map's kind of um, strange. Like, all I'm seeing is gray and black. I don't see any tokens. 
Um, can't really see anything, actually. Interesting. Should have control of it. It's fine. I'll just I'll keep your token out. Okay. Do you have control over the wolf? Um, let me see. No, I, I can't move the wolf at all or anything. That's stupid. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, well, uh, right. you can definitely get up there. Yeah, I'm just I'm gonna get out of the way of. Um... Are you wanting to engage, or are you just want to run in the room? I think because if I've already used my action, yeah. So I I don't want to engage. I just want to get out of the way of Sad Kill and Callan if they want to get in the room. Okay. So they don't have to squeeze around me. How about now? Can you can you move the wolf now? Oh, yeah, I can. Can I go right there? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I'll yeah. I'll stay there and then I, that's that's I'm gonna I'm gonna that's it. Fair enough. That will that will take us to the drow and the darkness beyond. Will uh, step forward. Hey, stop it! Get up here! Kind of like motioning to figures below, and shoots a crossbow bolt at Isabel, getting a fifteen to hit. Oh man. Yeah, that hits. Is Isabel, you take four points of piercing damage and I need a constitution saving throw. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, Don't forget about your eight temporary hit points. That is oh, true. right. And Alva, you have eight temporary hit points as well, which I'll, th I'll throw on that token there. So you'll see it in that little red bar. <laughs> okay. Uh, as, yeah, you get, you take four points of piercing damage and feel no effects from this drow poison that just shot into you. Taking Ooh, us to White baby. Claw. So, moving through mouth is wooden, but, uh... I would say moving movement? through that hallway, you, you would need to expend five extra feet of movement. Okay, so that means it's gonna be five, ten... I can go up there. Okay. Well, not quite. You can get, I can, you can get, get, you can right get there. You can get right there at the top of the stairs. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go there. I don't see anything. So use action to dash to get closer. All right. And I'm going to get right there. And that'll be it. And you have eight temporary hit points at the end of your turn. Taking us to Zadkiel. Cal on deck. And you're muted, Dan. Okay, that is going to move up Z stairs. Uh, one, two, three. Right here, so you can see. Okay. And then, uh, let me just measure here real quickly. And check something real quick. Uh, Zad is going to cast Bless on Alva, uh, Isabella, and uh, White Claw. All right. As the, a cool breeze floats through and kind of this light touches upon each of you. Anything else for Zad? Uh, that is going to be it for this taking us to Cal. 
Zad, you have eight temporary hit points at the end of your turn. You're also muted, okay. Scotty. Sorry. Uh, I'll take uh, steady aim and take a shot at that guy. All right. Uh, 16 just barely hits. He tries to like raise his shield as orange energy bursts through for 14 points of damage. Anything else? That's it. All right. Taking us to the bugbears. Like, oh! And they will both rush Isabel at the moment. They're morning stores. Uh, getting a 22 and a 15 to hit. Uh, both unfortunately hit. As you take 32 points of piercing damage. Uh, bye bye. As Isabel gets knocked the fuck out. <laughs> I really shouldn't have. Be, I'm. I'm not yeah, enjoying my new armor that's, class. That's a no. That's an understatement again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> however. <laughs> Two other, two other bugbears uh, could kind of barely see them stop what they're doing in the distance uh, below and start climbing. As that's about all they can do is climb and get up there. Uh, ending their turn. And they will... Both of them will kind of get up next to the wolf readying swings themselves. Top of the round, Mel. Does, mm -hmm. Did that include your eight temporary hit points, Isabel? It sure did. All right. Mel, what you doing? Uh, one second. Yeah. From there, where she's standing, she's going to attempt to throw a firebolt at the bugbear that is to the left of Alvi, or to the right. Okay. Fair enough. Launching a bolt of fire. 24 definitely Ooh. hits it. <laughs> Two is singe its fur a little bit. Like, oh! <laughs> Anything else for Mel? Uh, no, that's it for her. All right, go ahead and roll your temp hit points for the turn. Uh, and that'll take us to Isabel. Isabel, if you'll again today, roll me a. I me know. A, for me a death save. <laughs> I know the drill. There you go. All right. Taking us to Alva. Okay. Uh, I'm going to attack the um, bugbear to my right. All right. He's the one that got blasted with psychic energy and burned a little bit. Uh, ten is unfortunately going to be a miss. You know, he just kind of like pushes back your snout with his shield. You good. All right. Um, no, and I'm, I'm going to stay where I'm at as well. All so. right. Taking us to the drow in here. Hurry up. Oh, take care of that wolf. Uh, as he shoots a crossbow bolt towards the wolf. Uh, getting an eight to hit. Uh, very much missing the wolf as, after he calls out that he's he's going to get him. Uh, and takes a step back into the darkness. Uh, taking us to White Claw. I'm going to... Wait a second. No, never mind. You're good. I was going to say, uh, Alva, you do have Bless, so which 
it's hard to equate in the wolf. So you get a D4 on your attacks and saves, but a D4 wouldn't have helped you in that instance. I am going to cast a chill touch on the bugbear right by the wolf. All right. A 21 will hit. For six points of necrotic damage, this necrotic kitty claw scratches against his neck. Uh, he seems like that guy seems like he's taking a beating. <laughs> Anything else for White Claw? Move a little bit closer to get, uh, down the stairs to get better sight, and that'll be it. All right. I'll take us to Zadq. Okay, Zad is going to move um, down the steps to this guy. Um, now, with her pack tactics, do I get advantage or is she that does, only. It's not you. He does, not me. Okay. She has pack tactics. Making? You don't. Yeah. Right. I didn't know if it like, benefited everybody. Nope. Gotcha. You know, a boy can hope. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> And Zad's going to attack this little goblin guy here. He's a big goblin. He's a goblin. He's, he's a bugbear. He's, he's a, bug a stand a good foot and a half taller than you. You know. Uh, I forgot how attacks worked for a second. That checks out. <laughs> A 25 will hit it. For six points of slashing damage as you cut into his side and he goes tumbling down right next to Alva. Or right next to... Yeah, right next to Alva too, but uh, more right next to Isabel on the ground. Anything else for Zad? Uh... Nope, that's going to be it. All right, taking us to Cal. Dr. Stoutmeyer to the rescue. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm going to use my bonus action to dash. One. I'm going to use my action to give her a healing potion. You can't do it while you're on the same space as the wolf. Yeah, there you go. You're good. Uh, so, uh, I roll a 2d6. 2d4 two, two plus 2. 2d4. Two 2d4 plus 2. As, yeah, uh, Isabel, you get 7 hit points. Wahoo! 1, 2, and I'll stop there. Oh, right. uh, no, strike that, I get one more, so I'll stop there. Done. And you just quickly quaff a potion down Isabel's throat and just roll backwards. Uh, <laughs> take us to the bugbears. Did this guy get up there yet? That'd be hilarious. Uh, he's going to run up to the wolf. This guy's going to run up to Zadkiel. Uh, these two guys taking care of the wolf, or trying to, with their morning stars. Uh, getting a 14 and a 22 to hit the wolf. They both hit. As the wolf is going to take 22 points of piercing damage. Mm -hmm. So make sure you take away 8. If you click on your token, you'll see the 8 in the red. Take take that away first before you take away from the, the green. I don't... Oh, okay, I see. Gotcha, the temporary is the 8. Yeah, the temporary is the 8 at the moment. Uh, and so that will be gone, and then you'll take away 14 from the 37. Okay. Uh, no, you won't have, you'll take away 14. Oh, sorry. I, I mean, sorry. <laughs> You're good. Uh, but the other bugbear will try to swipe at Zadkiel. Yeah, you'll pay for that. Uh, getting a 16 to hit. Zad says, no, I won't. Clinks against your shield. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll take us to Mel. Uh, he walks. I guess she can get to here. And she uses Toll of the Dead against the bugbear in front of Zachiel. All right. Big wisdom save. Here, a church bell ringing somewhere. You got a six, so go ahead and roll me a D8. And none of them are missing any hit points at the moment. Ah. It'll take five points of necrotic damage, as now he is missing hit points. Anything else for Mel? And that's it. And the temp roll is four. All right. I think everyone still has all their temporary hit points except for the wolf and Isabel. Mm -hmm. Which will take us to Isabel. Hello. Um, okay. Let's, let's see. I did use my second wind, I believe. You did. So for sure. I did. That sucks. And your um, <laughs> Yep, I used both, which is lovely. Um, I am going to just attack the bugbear north of me. All right, kind of getting up, uh, still holding your sword somehow. Yep, Give me that somehow. Swing. 17 will hit, and you do have Bless as well, but a 17 will hit. You're on Whisper. And mm -hmm. you are on Whisper. Oh no! We believe you. That was for the oh, great. Um, so wait, should I, should I have checked bless or I should have unchecked bless? Make sure it's checked in your attack. I I checked it off for you. You're good. A seventeen. Okay, yeah. Because I was like, wait. Yeah. Okay. You have to cool. check it in and... saving throws and global attack modifiers. Amazing. Okay. Uh, I will. Yeah, you do that. hit that guy. And. When I'm making this attack, let me just make sure of something. Um, okay, I think so. Action surge. I don't have to. You don't have extend action surge any superiority anymore. die. No, I'm just. I didn't have to extend the no, superiority no, die. No, no, that's, that's just an extra fighter thing. Amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna make this attack a menacing attack. Okay, so make sure you check your superiority die under global damage modifiers. All right, that is checked. Then I'm gonna go boom. Then I can press this, and then yeah. So you will take 13 points of damage as you cut into him, and as you what growl at him. Yeah, I go, uh... uh... And he definitely gets taken aback by that. He's like, what? That's... Uh, no. Uh, you and your family uh, are, are dead. That's what I'll say really quickly, though. Okay, <laughs> sure. That's the best, that's the best she could come up with. You and your family are dead. Dead, dead. Intimidating sound. Fair enough. Uh... <laughs> Isabella, at the end of your turn, you do get four temporary hit points. Yes. And that will take us to Alva the Wolf. I'm going to attack the um, bugbear just uh, above me. Okay. Wait. And you do have advantage. A 20 Wait. will definitely hit. As you deal mm -hmm. 14 points of piercing damage. Let's see if he gets knocked on the ground or not. Uh, getting a 21. He stands firm as you try and pull him down to the ground. Uh, he, but he definitely did take a chunk out of him as you tear through his like torso and leg. Anything else for Alva? Nope, that would be all for me. All right. That will take us to the drow frustrated with all this uh gonna shoot a crossbow bolt at uh isabel getting a two that didn't hit me steps steps further into the darkness uh taking us to white claw 
Yeah. I'm going to throw mine. And I was chill touching the uh, one in front of Zedkill. All right. It's going to be a miss. A little bit. Zach, yo. All right, Zad is going to attack uh, Mr. Noel and not Noel, Bugbear. Bug Bear. <laughs> five different things so far. <laughs> they me... remind me. <laughs> the design reminds me of the old EverQuest Noles. Never mind. Oh, okay, I can see that. EverQuest. Um, uh, he's gonna attack. Twenty four is gonna hit. And he tries to defend it with his shield, but it just kind of slams into his shoulder for eleven points of slashing damage. He's looking pretty hurt. And then uh, he's just gonna bash him into the ground. All right. Wait, hold on a Give me a athletics check. Ooh, just barely beat him. As you do, knock him down onto the ground. Kind of just barely get the better of him, just kind of shove him over. Yep, that'll be that for his ad. All right, taking us to Cal. Uh, the bugbear with the skull on it, what's that? He's scared of Isabel. <laughs> She's super scary. Mm -hmm. She said his family's dead. Him right, and well, his family are die. Let's let's see if we can help him <laughs> along on that. Like All right. Fifteen year old kid do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm doing the original steady aim and firing. Fair enough. Twenty three is definitely going to hit. Oof. Takes a whopping six points as he's. Barely even notices this kind of like orange energy buzz by his head. It's just like kind of gives him a good haircut, uh, but also like affects his mind at the same time. He's still like looking at Isabel. That's all I got. All right, taking us to the bugbear. We'll start with the guy looking at Isabel uh, at disadvantage, swinging his morning star at you. No, uh, getting a fourteen to hit. Uh, okay. I need a reminder. So, 14, he meets my armor class. That then, means he then, gets it, right? He gets it. He gets it. I'm learning. I'm learning. So you God take sake, this is each. six points of piercing damage. Guys, uh, I'm sweat. I've been sweating all night. <laughs> the other bugbear <laughs> here will attack the wolf once again uh, for eight points, or getting an eight to hit. Which is going to be a, a miss. miss as you just kind of get a tuft of fur out of you. And the <laughs> other bugbear here will kind of stand up. Hey, no, I knock you over. And <laughs> tries to <laughs> smash Zadkiel with his morning star. Getting a 14 to hit. That's a miss, and I say, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, seemingly <laughs> frustrated, all of them. Uh, taking us to Mel. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. she spotted the brow. Mm hmm. And she's going to upcast uh, Magic Missile at that drow. All right. Let's see four missiles coming his way. Four, 1d4? Mm-hmm. Plus four. All right, for 13 points of force damage as these uh, black light, not black lights, but you know, we are, we discussed it. And he takes uh, mm -hmm. 
13 points of force damage as they all pelt into him. <clears throat> Seems like a tough guy. Anything else for Mel? Oh, Mel's gonna be Mel and step behind. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, wait. I'll take us to Isabel. Uh, yes, present. And I'm going to attack the person. I mean, the person, the bugbear. He's a person. I don't want to be specious. Is that, yeah, is a, that a bug? Person. Can I say person? Yes, okay. absolutely. He's not like, like a buggy. No. Like he's a person. People he's are empty. persons. He's a very he's big empty. goblin. He's, he's wipe a... the, wipe, wipe him off your boot. He's sentient. Maybe he's a person. I guess. My His family won't be much longer. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. Is a sapiens that makes him cool. Uh, oh. Isabel. I'm gonna just yeah. attack the guy north of me. Go we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. And yeah, I'm still water. Okay. Wait. I uncheck superiority dice, do I not? If you're not using a superiority dice, don't have it checked. But bless is checked I'm because I'm still blessed. Because you're blessed. I am blessed. Praise be. Um. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a superiority die there to increase that attack roll. If you Let's think do if, it. You, if you think a D eight will help. Oh wait, I don't have any left. How do I not have any left? I don't know. You should have gotten him back on a short rest. I <sighs> did press short rest. I don't know what happened. It might not have added up. I think I might just take that as it is. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I'm gonna Holding take it as ground it is. there. Yeah. Yep. Taking us to Alva. Okay, I'm attacking the one just north of me again. All right, give me that big old bite. And you do have advantage. 19 will definitely hit for 10 points of piercing damage. Let's see if you can let's see if he gets knocked down. And apologies, uh, do I gain four HP? You gain. You have five temporary hit points now. Okay. Uh, so that. Thank just you. remember, it doesn't add to your previous temporary hit points. It's just you take whatever is better. So if you had three and she's giving you five, now you have five. If you had five and she's giving you three, you would have five. So you have five temporary hit points. That's why some people still have eight temporary hit points, I believe. Uh, but he got a 12 on his saving throw as he is knocked down onto the ground. Anything else for this wolf? No. That'll take us to the drow, who's going to shoot a stray shot at uh, Isabel. Really? Yep. Getting oh. a t getting a twelve to hit. Uh, Be bye bye. Before, before no, it... wait, no, no armor class. Wait. Yeah, it, it misses. Uh, I'm just so used to dying today. I yep, twelve misses. Uh, as he disappears down a hallway, taking us to White Claw. I'm gonna try a another chill touch on the one in front of uh, Zed Kale. All right. Of That's course, the, not the, 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 one. definitely gonna be a miss. I'm gonna use two sorcery points to cast another one. You want to use your. Uh, Inspiration? Uh, no, I'm right, keeping there. that. All right. It's going to be a big miss. All right, that'll be it. Taking us to Zadkiel. Zadkiel's going to attack. All right. Zad's going to do as Zad's going to do. Zad away. 24 is going to hit this bug bear. Seven points of slashing as he's it's holding firm. He's he's up, but he's hurt. I see. I say. It's good to see you standing. 
And then knock him over again. Right. <laughs> 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 You bully. <laughs> As he holds firm, you got 13. Yeah. And I go, ah. <laughs> and that'll take us to cow. Haircuts for everyone. And I'll take a shot at him with my original steady aim. All right. That's, that's going to hit. As you give him more than a haircut, his head explodes. <laughs> that's it. I'm done. All right. Taking us to the bugbears. Uh, this guy gets up. Uh, one swinging at the wolf and the other swinging at Isabel. Uh, Wolf got a six. Isabel got an eight. As they're both just kind of swinging. Uh, like, hey, boss. Uh, they are actually going to both run away. So Isabel and the wolf can each take an attack of opportunity against these bugbears. Yeah. They try to run away. Okay. Sir, remind me that would that be an advantage? No. Nope. Because they're running away. I will tell you when they have advantage. A uh, 23 will hit, though. And Wolf can make an attack as well. It is 16 to hit. Both of those do hit. Guy splashes into the creek. And the oh. other other guy splashes into the creek as well next to him. With the tension of battle still lingering. No sign of the drow who was just here a moment ago. Four bugbear bodies surround you. That would be a good spot to end tonight. As you <clears throat> making your way down this place. You you've come it does look like it actually meets up to the other side, which is over there. Uh but yeah, as you guys approach this not chasm, this is kind of like sunken in uh, crevice where a couple of the bugbears were down there previously. Callan saw digging. Uh, but we'll pick up there next week uh, with whatever you guys are doing next. So, cool. Megan! Yeah. Your word of the week is disengage. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Or just don't disengage. be the only person on my board. To be fair, yeah. it is what it is. But <laughs> thanks for watching Twitch, and we'll oh. see you next, it's okay. next week. <laughs> <laughs> We're on fucking Twitch. <laughs>